Right now on Arkansas Crime Watch, mistake or murder? Body cam footage captures the chaos after a Dallas police officer enters the wrong apartment and kills a Harding University graduate. <laughs> Homeless and accused of rape. What the teenage victim told authorities and the encounter the suspect had with her mom. <laughs> Caught on camera, a burglar spends eight hours rummaging through a carport. Violent crime on the rise. We always joke about getting shot as soon as we walk out the door. The concern students at UA Little Rock have once they step off campus. Through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations, from the most violent crimes to petty infractions, this is Arkansas Crime Watch with Kevin Kelly. The highly anticipated trial of a Dallas police officer who fatally shot a Harding University graduate is well underway. Good evening and thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch on Fox16.com. I'm Kevin Kelly. Amber Geiger shot and killed Botham Jean on September 6, 2018. A jury is now deciding if she's guilty of murder, a lesser offense such as manslaughter or no crime at all. On Friday, an emotional Geiger was put on the stand telling the jury she never wanted to take an innocent person's life. Horrible person. I feel like a piece of crap. I hate it every, I hate that I have to live with this every single day of my life. And I ask God for forgiveness, and I hate myself every single day. I feel like I don't deserve the chance to be with my family and friends. I wish he was the one with the gun that killed me. I never wanted to take an innocent person's life. Another compelling moment this week when prosecutors played body cam video shortly after the shooting that took Botham Jean's life. Fox News correspondent Casey Stegall reports. Never before seen body camera footage was shown in court today, worn by the first police officers on scene the night Botham John was shot in his own apartment last September. Come on, Chief. Come on, Chief. Responding officers can be immediately seen starting life saving measures. After testifying, the victim did have a faint pulse when they arrived. I'm an officer. I thought I was in my apartment, and I shot a guy thinking that he was thinking it was my apartment. The former cop on trial for murder reached for tissues as her frantic conversation with the dispatcher and Botham Jean played for the jury. Prosecutors, however, say phone records show Geiger texted her patrol partner, with whom she had a prior sexual relationship at the time she was on the line with 911. The state questioned why she did that versus rendering aid like her training suggests, arguing Jean could have survived had the 26-year-old been medically treated right away. Amber Geiger made a series of unreasonable errors and unreasonable decisions and unreasonable choices. The defense fired back, saying their client, who had a perfect record before this, was exhausted from working a 15-hour shift and truly thought she was interrupting a burglary in process in her own apartment. Her actions show just a young woman that's just devastated, absolutely devastated by what just happened. If the jury ultimately finds Geiger guilty, they must next decide whether it's murder, manslaughter, or criminally negligent homicide. In Dallas, Casey Stiegel, Fox News. Joining me now to talk more about this case is Ariana Goodman, an associate lawyer with the Dallas-based law firm Bell Nunley. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate your time. I know it's an extremely busy time for you, seeing you've been watching this case closely. Let's get right to it. As you know, Geiger took the stand on Friday, very emotional, saying she hated herself and that she wishes that she was the one who had taken the bullet. What, what kind of impact will that, uh, her testimony have on the jury, do you think? You know, that's a great question. You know, it, it's always risky to have your client take the stand. You never know how how the testimony is going to influence the jury. But here, you know, it, it was extremely emotional, very powerful. And I think, based on the defense of the mistake of fact that she's raised, this is the best way for the jury to assess whether, 
you know, was her mistake, was her assumption that it was her apartment, was it reasonable and was it honest? It, there's no question Geiger killed both of John. That, that's, that's not up for debate, really. The real question is whether a, a crime was committed and her guilt or innocence will likely be determined, as you know, by the defense's ability to argue what's called the mistake of fact. Can you briefly explain what that is in the simplest of terms? Sure. So mistake of fact is it's the defense saying that um, Geiger was acting on an assumption of fact that rather than a criminal purpose. So in order for the jury to assess that, they have to determine was it reasonable and was it an honest assumption that was wrong. Um, you know, really what the issue is her state of mind, which is always difficult in these cases. Yeah, uh, Geiger's maintained all along, and you kind of touched on this a minute ago, that she mistook Jean's apartment as her own and that she thought he was an intruder. As you know, state law in Dallas allows people to defend themselves and their property. There's also a no duty to retreat. How important is that in this case, based on what we know at this point? You know, I think the duty to retreat comes back to whether or not the jurors find that her mistake of fact was honest and reasonable. If they find that it was, you know, was it reasonable for her? Was she justified to use deadly force to protect herself and what she thought was her own home? As you know, there's a strong perception that this was a police shooting. Geiger was in her uniform, but we should point out she was off duty. She was not responding to an emergency or pulling someone over. Yet the public perception is still this, that this was a white police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man. And, and let's be honest here, people are watching how this plays out, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and I think that's tough because I think you're right. This isn't the traffic stop. This isn't an arrest. This isn't what we would consider routine traffic or police work. This was someone who had just gotten off of a 13 hour shift. She was going into what she thought was her own apartment. Um, but I think the real issue here is that we have a serious police community relations issue. And the case is highlighted. Um, and over the past few years, we've seen numerous cases where officers are shooting and killing unarmed black men. So I think it highlights a bigger question of when are our officers actually off duty? And also, I think the public holds our officers to a higher standard, especially when it comes to using reasonable uh, deadly force and whether or not that's reasonable. Yeah. Ariana Goodman, I know you're busy, but we appreciate you taking the time to join us on Arkansas Crime Watch. As you know, a lot of people are watching this case closely, as will we, but we do appreciate you taking the time to join us. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Turning now to another story, a homeless man arrested in Hot Springs, accused of raping a juvenile. It allegedly happened more than once over the course of a year. Despite a gag order on the case, Caitlin Reardon was able to find out through public records what led investigators to make the arrest? In July of 2018, the 13-year-old victim told interviewers at the Cooper Anthony Mercy Child Advocacy Center that she was raped by a known suspect. She says Dwayne Tillman came in her bedroom in June of 2018 and had intercourse with her. According to investigators, while it was happening, her mom knocked on the door, at which time Tillman told the victim to, quote, get her mother away from the door. He also told her not to snitch on him. The victim's mother came in the room and found Tillman hiding in the closet, but he denied having inappropriate contact with the young teen. Almost a year later, the victim was interviewed again at the Advocacy Center, where she told investigators she had been raped more than once by Tillman. She told investigators she did not want to sleep at the house if he was going to stay there. During an interview with the victim's sister, she told investigators that she saw Tillman on top of her sister and said he was lifting up her dress, holding her down, and said that she begged him to do it. The documents do not explain the more than a year gap between the first interview and the arrest of Tillman. Again, there is a gag order on the case, so investigators are unable to answer any questions about how that happened. Tillman, meanwhile, is being held in the Garland County Detention Center on a $300,000 bond. Caught on cr camera, a burglar going through a Saline County's family's carport overnight, taking off with hundreds of dollars worth of extension cords. When Monica Eckhart woke up Monday morning, she 
saw her gate was open, so she checked her surveillance camera and found this. A man going through her belongings starting at 1030 Sunday night and not running away until six in the morning. I think you saw the cords and was like, oh, there's my ticket to get a long extension cord. An officer was able to locate the stolen extension cords, but not the suspect who was identified as Anderson Whitworth. If you see him, call the Saline County Sheriff's Office. Investigators with the Moralton Police Department need your help identifying a man caught on camera stealing a donation box at a gas station. Watch closely because in a split second, this man snags a donation jar full of cash and coins and then takes off. He walks up to the counter, distracts the employee, and when he's not looking, you'll see him snag that jar. Now, this crime took place at the Shell gas station near Highway 9. Police tell us the money was being collected to help disabled veterans build wheelchair ramps. I don't know what I would do to the individual that was standing in front of me that had the nerve to steal. It would not sit well with me. Police tell us this is the first time he's done this, so if you know who this man is, call Moralton Police. A Pine Bluff man fed up with criminals breaking in and trashing a home that he's trying to fix up. In two days, the crooks broke in on three different occasions, and it was all caught on camera. Watch closely as the trespassers walk right up to check doors and windows before busting in. You can even see them looking around inside, one of them pouring paint all over the floors, walls, and windows. Certainly a big mess that the owner is now stuck cleaning up. Right now, you're just struggling to stay uh, ahead of the damages and cover your cost and stuff that's getting stolen. Pine Bluff police have all the video. In some of the clips, you can even see the crooks running off minutes before officers get there. The owner says the cameras are motion censored, so he's hoping if they trip again, police will be able to get there in time to make an arrest. Reports from Little Rock police show a violent trend surrounding the UA Little Rock campus. Just last month, a man was shot and killed right across the street from campus. Tyler Thomason taking a closer look at the numbers, the streets involved, and the violent crimes that are already higher than all of last year. For some, one wheel is better than two. That's how I get everywhere, like to and from classes and to and from rehearsal. Harmon Tobler is a freshman at UA Little Rock. He cycles from point A to point B here on campus, but just a few steps off campus. Some students, like junior Kiana Esquivel, make it a point to avoid. Yeah, I don't want to take a chance. We obtained records for what Little Rock police classify as violent crime reports along these sections of four streets, which outline the UA Little Rock campus. Last year, there were 13 reports. This year, so far, there are 19, including a homicide last month. Last month proved to be the most active, with four violent crimes reported, including two gunpoint robberies on South University, one at Popeyes, and one at Burger King. Last year, police noted four aggravated assault calls in the area. This year, there have already been six, two of them involving guns. We always joke about getting shot as soon as we walk out the door. That's just how it is. Officials at UA Little Rock say preliminary numbers show student enrollment has suffered an 8% drop. Whether neighboring crime has sent people peddling away. I just hope everything gets better. Remains unclear. Little Rock police say it's taking proactive measures to address the issue. The captain in that area recently launched Operation Midtown, which prioritizes traffic stops as a deterrent for other crimes. LRPD has also ramped up community engagement there, hosting a trust walk to get input from people who live nearby. Hot Springs police investigating a shooting that left one man dead. The shooting taking place Monday night along the 100 block of Chapel Street. When officers arrived on scene, they found 39 year old Corey Gibson dead from a gunshot wound. As for the suspect, police believe this man is responsible for killing Gibson. His name is Vincent Lewis. Police say he should be considered armed and dangerous. If you see this man or happen to know where he might be, give Hot Springs police a call. A Bryant woman arrested after police say she left her two month old baby in a shopping cart. Police were called to the Bryant Walmart last weekend after a witness found the baby all alone in a shopping cart corral. Police identified the mother, Lessie Marcana, because she left her wallet in the shopping cart. 
After being contacted by police, she returned to the store. The officers then placed her under arrest, charged her with endangering the welfare of a minor and possession of a controlled substance. Turning now to our crime tracker. In Lowell, Arkansas, earlier this week, a man was involved in a fatal standoff with SWAT officers. Police say 31-year-old Charles Nation barricaded himself inside his house as law enforcement tried to serve him an arrest warrant. Benton County SWAT and negotiation teams were called in and officers at one point tried to enter his home, but Nations, who was armed, refused to give up. As far as the specifics as to what happened, um, really the only information right now that I can share is just due to the subject's um, actions that did result in the suspect being shot. The deputy who, was sh who shot Nation was placed on a paid administrative leave. State police, the Benton County Sheriff's Office and Lowell Police are all conducting an investigation. A Judsonia police officer in trouble with the law tonight, Daniel Schmidt, was arrested by Searcy police, accused of stealing from a local Walmart. He was cited for shoplifting last month. Schmidt has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Tonight's mug of the week goes to Lisa Renee Andrews, who not only had a bad hair day, but she just had a bad day overall. Andrews was booked into the Garland County Jail for public intoxication. As we leave you, here's a look at Arkansas's most wanted. Keep in mind, all of the suspects you've seen tonight are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Remember, if you have any information on any of these cases we talked about tonight, you're asked to call your local police department. Thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch. I'm Kevin Kelly. Be smart, be safe, and if you see something, say something. I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 530 and 9.